from WFRV-TV, Local 5, serving Northeast Wisconsin, including Green Bay, Fox Cities, and the Lakeshore. This is Newsmaker Sunday. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. On this morning show, we feature a Wisconsin city that is part of two counties, Outagamie and Wapaka. The uh, giveaway clue to this whole thing, uh, that city changes its name every St. Patrick's Day to New Dublin. Now you know what it is, right? We are, of course, talking about New London. Our guest this morning knows all things New London. He is City Administrator Chad Hurth. Chad, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Much appreciated. Not a problem. It's an honor. Little background, please, sir, if you would. Uh, sure. Where you came from, your education, how mm -hmm. you got here. Wonderful. Um, from Chilton, Wisconsin. Okay. So from the area, Northeast Wisconsin by far. Uh, graduated in 1994, and then uh, I ended up going to UW La Crosse. Um, my majors was actually in fitness and sports management, so I wasn't in the public sector role or the track right off the bat. Uh, I was more in the recreation uh, field, but I ended up in Parks and Recreation, my first job in Brilliant, Wisconsin, as the Parks and Rec Director, uh, with, along with facilities. Ended up in uh, Brilliant, great city. Uh, ended up there for about seven years and uh, had an opportunity to move into New London. And since then, uh, I've been in different capacities in New London. Uh, I started there with Parks and Recreation and facilities, but I uh, ended up kind of moving up the rack, racks a little, little bit um, with uh, taking a, a short role overseeing public works, but then all of a sudden the city administrator role came open and here I am today. So from sports and fitness into what you're doing now, uh, kind of a strange transition. How, do, how did you make that transition? Correct. Um, yeah, not the typical transition. Right. And you typically when you go to school, you're, you're in the you know, public management type you know, sure. you know, track. Um, but, um, you know, I, I started with the, the parks and recreation uh, field, which that got me into the public sector in, in municipal work. Um, and then just being within a municipality, you, you learn on the job, you know, about uh, working with municipalities and, you know, city councils and uh, ordinances and, and all the stuff that goes along with it. And um, over time, it's on the job training. So you've been on the job for how long now? I've been with New London for about 15 years now. 15 as okay. city administrator? Uh, city administrator for two. For two. Yes. Okay. Oh, what was the trigger? What made you decide, I want to be the city administrator? Oh I want to be the boss. I want to go to the top. That's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, I think it was just a matter of, you know, um, progression up, you know, trying some different roles uh, in municipal government, um, working with the existing staff that's there, um, a really good team with New London, um, and, and just trying something new. Um, it was an opportunity just because you've been in, um, the different aspects with municipal government. So it was just a, a different role to try to um, manage, you know, all the city operations. But again, you know, working with the entire staff to, to get things done. So what is this position like as opposed to the positions you held as you worked your way up? Sure. It's a lot different when you're the employee, so to speak, mm -hmm. as opposed to when you're the boss. Sure. What's life like now? Well, I've been in the management role for years just because the Parks and Rec Director position um, so I've been a manager for quite some time, okay. but um, definitely being in the city administrator role, there's quite a bit more interaction with, um, with older persons and the public in general. Um, a lot of times people come all the way to the top when they want to answer. So you're, you're dealing with um, answering different questions about you know, wastewater to street repairs to parks to um, you name it, many things that municipal governments take care of. What is your management approach, your management philosophy? If mm -hmm. I'm a New London resident and I've got an issue, I've got a problem. Mm -hmm. Can I call you? Can I come and see you? Or do I wait for a city council meeting? Mm -hmm. How approachable are you? We want to talk. Okay. You know, we definitely want to have a conversation. Um, it, you, funny you bring that up because I had a um, someone tell me that there was an individual that was going to come to a council meeting um, in, at this actually council, this next council meeting. Um, I actually reached out and had a conversation with the person. Let's, let's talk. Um, because if you come to the council meeting, it's not really a dialogue situation. You're not right. going to get questions and answers there. So um, I actually invited the individual in to, to answer his questions. And I think it was a much better scenario uh, to have that conversation where we can actually give the information. I can go on the computer. I can show maps. I can really you know, provide that information instead of just coming to a city council meeting voicing your opinion, maybe expecting answers that you're really not going to get at a council meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so that works out really well. But yeah, definitely give us a call. Come on in. If I can't answer the questions, hopefully I can direct you to the chief of police, the public works director, or so on. But definitely I can be the first person to, to you know, 
steer you in the right direction. Right, and oftentimes when a person like that wants to come to a council meeting, it's mm -hmm. sometimes to either create a scene, mm -hmm. make a point, and this way you put out the fire early. Absolutely, that, yeah. that's exactly what it is. If, if we can get the answers out and uh, educate and uh, you know, provide them the information they're looking for, I think it's a better scenario by far. Sure. You know, when you, you, you come down uh, town in, into New London, you notice a whole lot of reserva uh, renovations going mm -hmm. on. What's, what's happening down there? We are reconstructing our downtown. We're re redeveloping it. Um, we have. Uh, we were lucky enough to get a 2.9 million dollar STP urban grant, um, which is helping us uh, renovate our downtown. This year, we're working on the sanitary sewer and water replacements on uh, North Water Street, um, and that's leading up into next year's project, where we're going to be pretty much ripping up from building the building, new sidewalk, new curb and gutter, new lighting, new roadway. Um, it's going to be a great transition um, for our downtown. You're also tackling parking down there, I understand. Yes. What's, what's the situation been like in the past and what are you doing to rectify it? Yep. Traditional downtown, people complain there's not enough parking sure. in the downtown. So uh, we were lucky enough to have the opportunity to purchase a vacant lot that's pretty much almost in the middle um, of our downtown street. And um, we purchased that. There was a one-way street right next to it, Lincoln Court. Um, we're going to discontinue using that um, short stretch of Lincoln Court, convert that all into new parking, and it ties into a existing city parking lot. And then we actually purchased another little parcel um, that's connected to the north side of that, um, and we're making one brand new parking lot that's going to be a new um, parking lot, adding 78 stalls in the middle of our downtown, which is going to be a great addition. And then you've got a new library as well. Correct. Is that, have you moved to a different spot, same spot? Not yet, but that's in the works. Okay. Um, so what happened with our library situation, our library and museum board for years has been looking at uh, finding um, a place and a way to increase library programming. And um, the previous to what you're seeing on the screen right now, um, the library museum board purchased some property across from the existing library, mm -hmm. and they were going to build a second building across the street to call it an annex. And uh, that was to increase more STEM programming, the science, technology, math, um, education, or uh, engineering and arts. And um, do, they did their studies. They were just about ready to go out to build, to build the second building across the street, where um, First State Bank in the downtown was also looking at a different project. Their current building um, is not connected to their drive through Their drive through was across the street. And so they were planning on trying to figure out how they could incorporate their drive-through into their current structure. Um, and it ended up that it wasn't feasible to do that. So what they did was decide to um, tear down their drive-through and build their new corporate headquarters at that location. But that presented the um, question, what were they going to do with the existing building? Um, ended up that the First State Bank Board decided that they were going to donate it to the city for the new library project. And what that does, it actually brings um, the existing publication and circulation materials, the books, along with enough space to add the annex programming on the second floor so we can have the library and that new annex programming in one building instead of two separate facilities. Nice thing to get dropped in your lap, huh? Exactly, yeah. and that also gives us the opportunity because the existing library and museum building once the library moves, now the museum has extra room to expand. So the donation by First State Bank actually helps us get uh, a better programming aspect for the library, but also gives us expansion for our public museum. Our guest this morning, Chad Hurth, the city administrator for New London, and we have much more to come when we come back. Stay with us. We are back now with New London City Administrator Chad Hurth, the south side of the river downtown. You get a big vacant parcel of land down there, an apartment complex is going up. Tell us what's going on there. Correct. Uh, so the city acquired a piece of property uh, south of the uh, Wolf River, and for years the city was trying to market it and try to work with the developers to try to get some type of residential housing yeah. uh, on that property. Um, finally, um, in the last year and a half, uh, we came to an opportunity to work with SC Swiderski. They're out of the Mosinee, uh, Wausau area. And uh, we came up with a, a great idea for development, which uh, includes a new 98-unit 98, uh, 98 apartment complex on the Wolf River. So, um, but to do that, uh, the city needed to move a couple of major utilities in that area. So this year, this summer, we've been working on uh, 
what's called a utility relocate to make room for the new uh, apartment complex that you see on the screen right there. So this apartment complex, is it uh, a high end? Is it uh, what we call affordable housing? Mm -hmm. Where would you say it is? I wouldn't say it's high end, but it's probably going to be on the upper end of our um, uh, rental rates in mm -hmm. New London. I mean, it's on the Wolf River. It should be, exactly. you know, it's riverfront property. It's going to be that type of uh, apartment uh, complex, which we definitely need. We've been uh, going out and talking to our industries, and our industries have been asking for additional opportunities for middle and higher management um, employees in town. So I think this might help us uh, accommodate yeah. some of those requests. You know, every city has this housing problem, especially for the l lower income, middle income. Are you addressing that? I is there anything you're doing to address that class? Yep, several years ago, um, the city worked with another firm to uh, create some uh, newer low-income type housing in mm -hmm. town, um, and we continue to research that. Um, there's, there's some opportunities that may be coming forward um, in an older apartment complex that uh, is kind of vacant right now that uh, might be coming out in the market in the near future that uh, we will assist if, if necessary and if we can to try to um, create more housing. Like you said, I mean, there's mm -hmm. definitely a need for more housing. Um, but one of the things that we've got going on, which is a great opportunity for New London, is we have four different um, housing um, developments going on in New London. The one we just talked about with SC Swiderski and several other ones in the community for um, apartment complexes, um, single family homes, duplexes. Um, New London really hasn't seen that much development going on in the last couple of years. So we're really excited about those four um, either under construction or things that are in the works for new housing in the city. You've, uh, you've got your Veterans Memorial. What has that meant to your city? Uh, veterans Memorial is a great addition for the downtown. Um, it, it's just a great uh, aspect to uh, remember um, what the veterans have done for the community and what the veterans have done for the city. And uh, yeah, you can see it up on the screen right there. Um, that was completely done by a local veterans group. It was completely volunteers and donations that made that happen. Um, great addition to the downtown in Taft Park. And uh, we're, you know, we're happy to have it and proud to, to showcase it. And, and downtown, you've got a lot of what people will call wall art. Yes. These murals. What, what's the story behind that? I mean, you know, some towns would say, well, that's graffiti, but in your town, it's, it, it's a draw. Yes. Uh, several years ago, the Wolf River Art League uh, brought a proposal to the community, and there's been several um, great um, advocates wow. for this um, group that have really put, they put a ton of work in the community and have created a lot of different murals in New London uh, showcasing the community. Uh, just a variety of different, different things, and a variety of age groups too. I mean, everything from what you saw on the screen there with um, on downtown businesses. Mm -hmm. The group also brought in um, opportunities for the kids to come and paint picnic tables in parks. So it, it was just a wide variety of different opportunities to showcase art in New London. Wow, we are talking all things New London this morning. We have much more to come, so please stay right there. And back now, New London City Administrator Chad Hurth is our special guest this morning. You've got that Wolf River running right through the heart of your city. What does that mean for your community? Yeah, the Wolf River is definitely an asset to the community. Um, we're actually at the convergence of the Embarrass River and Wolf River in downtown, but it turns into the Wolf River right. once they converge. Uh, the Wolf River um, is one of the best natural resources we have, uh, especially in the spring during the walleye run. Um, you can almost walk from boat to boat to boat across oh, the river. Sure. It's just packed. It's a great uh, uh, economic benefit for our boat launch as well because we have quite a few people that come uh, patronize and, and access the river with our boat launch. Um, but then in the summer you have you know people kayaking and it's just a widely used uh, resources that we have. In the spring the sturgeon run or the sturgeon spawning is a right. great different thing yeah. to bring kids in and bring families in and um, see what's happening in our area. So what does that river do for tourism in general? Mm -hmm. It's probably our biggest tourist to draw, you know, whether yeah. you're boating or, you know, kayaking or things like that. Um, definitely by far is, is the, the best way that uh, New London brings in tourism into the community. And, and it looks as though you're, you're showcasing that, that river. You've got a, a river walkway mm -hmm. on the south side of that river. How, how popular is that? Who, you know, who's using that? Yep. The entire community. Yep. I mean, it's a great river walk that uh, you can kind of go through almost the entire stretch of the Wolf River, especially in the downtown to the western edge of the community. Um, it's widely used by a lot of kids for fishing. It's fun to see kids 
all over in the community biking to the river with fishing poles uh, sticking out of their backpacks going to the river. Um, so there's a, a huge amount of um, shoreline fishing opportunities available in New London. In, in the grand scheme of the economy there, how big of a deal is tourism in general? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a ton of tourism as in like what Packet does with a chain of lakes and things like that. We might okay. draw a little bit off of that. Um, but we're probably a little bit more known for um, the, the natural resources like the fishing and, and things like that when it comes to tourism. So yeah, wh what is it if I'm visiting the area? Mm -hmm. What are the things that you would highlight to tell me, come to New London, we've got this, this, and this? Sure. We talked about the murals. Right. Um, we're definitely seeing quite a few people come for the murals. We've got some great shopping um, opportunities. We've got a great vintage um, uh, store downtown. Uh, our downtown is uh, filling up with different types of opportunities that come for shopping. Um, and our eateries are, are, are quite uh, a great place to come in and have a great bite to eat. We are back to wrap up with Chad Hurth. Uh, and you know we have to talk about St. Patrick's Day we do. on the flip side. So stay with us. We continue our conversation with New London City Administrator Chad Hurth. Uh, St. Patrick's Day in New London, you just put the two together every year. Um, St. Patrick's Day, when you turn your city into New Dublin, mm -hmm. tell us about that. That, that. That's a phenomenon. We have some mischievous leprechauns yeah. <laughs> that uh, go around the uh, week of New, uh, New Dublin. Mm -hmm. um, they go around. It actually starts off with the previous month, the uh, Shamrock Club of New Dublin, who hosts the event. It's not a city-run event. It's actually run by the Shamrock Club of New Dublin. Oh, okay. um, they actually come to the city council every, um, every March and request that they can change the name of New, New London to New Dublin. The city council passes that every year, and then you see the leprechauns go around, and they change the signs of New London, New London to New Dublin every year. Um, and it's a great festival in our community. It's, it's a week-long festival that each day of the week, there are different um, events going on, whether it's caroling, whether it's a family program night. Um, there's one day it's Hooligans Day, so a lot of people go out for corned beef and cabbage um, that day or that week. So great um, great uh, event to showcase New London and the heritage in New London. You know, I have covered that story for more years than I can count, mm -hmm. and you're the first person to ever tell me that there was this formal request. That is, yes. Before. Correct. And we thought it was just fun and games, we go mm -hmm. and change signs and that's it. No. Nope. There, there's more to it than meets the eye They here. come in for their <laughs> formal requests and it's approved and um, the festival happens. Now obviously there's a lot of coordination and logistics that happen for the event because for a community our size, that's a huge event. It's yeah. great uh, economic benefit for the community, great economic benefit for our businesses, um, but uh, it, it's a great celebration uh, for the community. And the parade uh, is one of the largest parades that you're going to see. It's, it's well over 100, 120 floats. Um, so it's, it's a quite, quite of a long parade. Hopefully it's warm. Many yeah. times it's, it's cool and chilly, but uh, sometimes it's warm. So you become New Dublin, but you also, uh, on a serious note, you have a sister city yes. in Ireland. What's the city? How did that come about? That's been a um, project that's been in the works for many years. Yeah. Um, there was a, um, it started with the Shamrock Club in New Dublin. Um, Carrie Katarzynski, who was a member of the Shamrock Club, um, reached out to several um, cities and different areas in Ireland to try to set up a sister city situation. Um, and Tony O'Brien, who was the, um, a representative in Killaloo, Ireland, was the first individual to respond to Kerry's requests. Um, they formed a relationship, and at that time, um, there was a um, effort to try to start this sister city thing. It kind of fizzled out uh, several years ago when they started to do it, but um, a year ago, it was brought back to the table with our new mayor to try to kind of revitalize the mm -hmm. sister city relationship. Um, we were lucky enough to get that done, and actually in two days on the 18th, we will be celebrating our first full year of a sister city with Killaloo, Ireland. Really? And, and um, it's New Dublin. Are you allowed to have a name like Katarzynski? <laughs> <laughs> on that, on yep. that day, you ought to change that as well. Sure. The, this, what is the, uh, the, the idea behind the sister city? I mean, would folks from the sister city ever come to New London? Mm -hmm. Would we ever send people there? How, 
what do you do in that relationship? Hopefully, hopefully all of the above. Um, yeah. I think first of all, we're we're gonna we are forming a local committee in our end, just to uh, you know, try to increase the relationship, try to increase some communication with New Dublin mm. or with sorry, <laughs> with um, Killaloo. And um, it might start with uh, working with the school districts that can maybe get some pen pal situations going okay, back and sure. forth. Okay, um, sure. And um, try to promote tourism. We were lucky enough that um, Tony O'Brien, who was the representative from Killaloo, um, he and a delegate, uh, a group of delegates from um, Killaloo and County Clare, Ireland, which Killaloo is part of, um, this week is coming to um, Milwaukee for Irish Fest. Tony came early um, before the festivities and he came to see friends in New London and we got to meet up with Tony yesterday and have a tour with him and have a great conversation about what the differences are between Killaloo and um, with New London and just similarities and cultural differences and, and especially with city government, how their government is different from uh, traditional Wisconsin government. Five years from now, we're sitting here. Mm -hmm. What has happened in New London? What has happened in New London? I think downtown you're going to see a major transformation. I mean, not only with the street construction we have going on, our new library complex will be open up by then um, with the additional housing. We're just going to have a great new atmosphere and new personality in our downtown district, which I think will be a great draw for the community. Chad Hurth, it has been a pleasure. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks I, I so much. I appreciate the invitation. City Administrator for New London. And if you have a newsmaker in your town who you think we should have on this program, let us know about it. Send us an email to tips at wearegreenbay.com or you can message us on Facebook. And be sure to join us once again Sunday morning at 730. Until then, have a great day.